Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, for the press release we are about to read to you, you're going to find that right there in the description box, as well as the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shamps campaign including the article by Neuroclastic that got the JRC to threaten to sue them, the GoFundMe for Neuroclastic to assist with legal fees. You also have the ever pre- oh, you also have Autistic Hoyas Massive Archive, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rutenberg Center down petition. When we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch click and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. All right. Okay. So press release. This is coming from Neuroclastic as of May 10th, so not that long ago. Press release. Judge Rotenberg Center threatens Neuroclastic with defamation suit. Folks, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of it, catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. You got young children present. Please use your headphones. All right. Go about saying. All right. I am brain dead, folks. I'm angry at life in general. So apologies in advance if I stumble over my words. And this is a very telling little fo- picture here. For decades, the Judge Rotenberg Center JRC in Canton, Massachusetts, has been using graduated electronic decelerators, GEDs, to shape the behaviors of children and adults. The GED device delivers a powerful, extremely painful electric shock and is worn by students 24 hours a day, every day, even during sleep and showers. The GED looks like a backpack or fanny pack with wires coming out of it that have electrodes on them. The electrodes are strapped to a disabled person's body, that it is the point of contact where the so- shocks will singe their skin, at times causing burns. This week, Neuroclastic CEO Tara Vance received a certified letter by Michael P. Flamina Esquire from Eckert Siemens Attorneys at Law, acting as the legal representation of the Judge Rotenberg Center here after JRC. The letter alleges that an article published on Neuroclastic, 900 ABA professionals have weighed in on the use of electric shock at Judge Rotenberg Center, contains defamatory statements that harm the Judge Rotenberg Center. That cease and desist letter can be viewed in full. We'll look there in a moment. The letter is dated April the 27th, 2022 and sent during Autism Acceptance Month. The JRC cites the following quotes from an aforementioned article that are defamatory and causing harm to JRC. A quote by Brian Middleton, MED, BCBA, LBA, TNC, that the skin shock in use at the JRC is 10 more times powerful than a stun gun, and that the JRC uses skin shock not answering a question in three seconds or saying no. A quote from RBT that JRC uses shock on clients while they are strapping down on a board on the floor. The majority of the individuals wearing a GED are black or brown. The JRC uses skin shock to treat completely innocuous behaviors like hand play and pressurized the ears. Proponents of the JRC argue that the use of the GED is used with consent, but built into JRC structure is the system of stripping consent to ensure the resident being admitted cannot say no. And all of JRC's residents are capable of consent, even in the absence of having access to words of communication. The skin shock JRC uses is much more powerful and many times stronger than a cattle prod. A quote from Matthew Weiser that the JRC's use of skin shock is torture and the JRC has murdered us by electrocution before. At this time, Neuroclastic will not be dignifying much of this letter with a response. We, along with the countless journalists and advocates, have thoroughly documented the abuse at the JRC. In fact, much of the evidence substantiating the aforementioned claim is linked in the article itself. Footage of the torture at JRC has aired on many major news networks. And we've seen that vid before. 
To our knowledge, based on publicly available and cited evidence, all statements made by Neuroclastic were believed to be true and accurate at the time of publication. We stand in our integrity. We will be... It will be apparent to any reasonable person that Neuroclastic understood the importance of accuracy, documentation, and citation and published the article. 900 ABA professionals have weighed in on the use of electric shock at Judge Rotenberg Center in good faith and exercising due diligence. There are people in your field who have more power over autistic lives, welfare, and futures than any human should have over another. They have more power than the United Nations and the U.S. government to influence autistic access to rights and self-determination. Shocking children. This is the defamation. JRC's legal representation claims JRC is not treating children with skin shock. JRC's clients are children who are all being successfully treated at JRC's ABA positive reinforcement training program. Really? While it may be currently factual, it is not historically factual. We cannot find no publicly available information that indicates children are no longer being shocked. If the JRC historically shocked children but no longer needs to, then the shocking of the children was never necessary. It was never a last resort. JRC's representation claimed that neuroclastic statement that the majority of individuals wearing a GED are black or brown is false. JRC does not discriminate in any fashion, including respect to treatment. The majority of clients receiving skin shock are Caucasian. There is no statistical or any other basis for neuroclastics tame of racial bias in the JRC's program. According to our research, this contradicts all the publicly available information on JRC. Of note, neuroclastic used the word black and brown, but the cease and desist letter from JRC uses the word Caucasian. Caucasian is an obsolete classification that can reference people from more than 100 different ethnic backgrounds and is sociologically and scientifically inaccurate. Racial classifications are ill-defined and have changed over time. They are essentially biologically meaningless, except as markers of the systematic oppression and the effect of racism on the body. Racial classifications provide value in understanding the historical stratified allocation of resources and power and the experience of being coded in society as one race or another based on external characteristics, as they are based on the logic that there is a meaningful difference between peoples with different characteristics, that sharply defined classifications can provide some valuable insight, which they cannot. Continuing to use outdated or imprecise terminology in our research, education, or clinical practice has real and tangible negative effects by perpetuating racism. Our word use of the word brown likely includes many of the people referenced as Caucasian, a moniker. Alice Popejoy, who needs a multidisciplinary diversity team with the UN National Institute of Health, opines. She notes that the scientific use of this term indicates that there are users either unbothered by or unaware of its roots in racist taxonomies and used to justify slavery, or worse, added to pseudoscientific claims of white biological superiority. Neuroclastic did not state or imply that JRC selects individuals for GED based on the color of their skin. However, JRC is complicit in the perpetuating systematic injustices and brutality that disproportionately impacts black and brown people, including brown people who fall under the defunct and inaccurate classification of Caucasian like Latins. Okay, and we looked at that back when we went over the reading here. It so, and we've gone over that map before. Let's take a look, people. If the discovery process, it is recognized that historically, as most credible sources report, the GED was used on a majority of black and brown students, then a reasonable interference would be, could be made that the JRC disproportionately discontinued the use of the GED on black and brown disabled individuals, potentially in response to negative media attention as a way to manage public perception. And if black and brown students were disproportionately exited from the use of the GED, then the inference could be made that the GED was not necessary and was being disproportionately used on black and brown residents. If the demographic constitution of the students at JRC is only 17% white, 
Why do white clients make up the majority of the individuals on the GED? Non-speakers can consent or revoke consent, period. And this is some stuff that we've already gone over through in the tweets, folks, when this first came out. I am going to make this a two-part and, and cut out now. I do appreciate your time. Blah. Uh, folks, we don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time tonight. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Yeah. <sighs>